What's going on everybody? I'm bald now and got no hair left. I went out drinking and it caught on fire lighting a cigarette and now I have no hair. And so I shaved it all off and it didn't look bad. So I was like, you know, that's, that's what's gonna be. Welcome back to the channel. We have a new video today that I have been putting off for the last 20,000 miles. I'm being absolutely honest. This is probably the first thing you should do to anything with a turbo engine, especially the WRX, because in these engines you get a lot of blow by and it gets routed back into your intake system, which messes up your turbo and uh, degrades the stupid word that I'm looking for. Anyway, I know it's a good thing. We've got an air oil separator. So I decided to go with the Cobb air oil separator instead of the IAG. It was only like $50 more than the IAG. And the IAG uh, wasn't in stock at the time, but the Cobb was. And apparently the Cobb has some nicer uh, hoses than the IAG and it's just a carbon copy otherwise. So that's what we got. So now we're gonna open it up and uh, see what it looks like. Cause I honestly, I've had this sitting on a shelf for the last year, almost, I don't even remember. It's, I've had it forever and I haven't even opened it. So we're gonna use some YouTube magic. So I'm gonna sprinkle our, our fairy dust on it so we can get our magic going. And then, there we go. All right, boom, yeah, it's all here. So this thing is so pretty. It's like, got like anodized red on the top of the little cob thing. The thing that's weird to me is down here where the IAG has the lines already like banjo bolted in there. This one doesn't have that. You screw one in here and you plug one in here. Besides that, get off me. You got your your little bracket here for relocating your ECU. Guessing this one goes poop right there. Yup. Uh, these are the ones that go on top of the engine to right behind, right underneath the EGR tube doodle. And these are heat wrapped because they sit on top of the engine. So that's pretty neat. This one goes up here, I think. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Here's the thing, I like doing how-to videos, but if it's your first time doing it, doing a how-to video, it's a little bit difficult. Knowing how to do something when it's your first time doing it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So it'll be interesting. I found a really, really good uh, t t tutorial how-to guide. It tells you everything you need to know. So I'm gonna link that guy's video down below. Um, uh, Jay's WRX, I think is what it was. It's a really good video. It's kind of entertaining actually, even for being an hour long, like there was not very many parts where I skipped through. So that's, I'm following his video to do this install and I'm making my video because I want to. Yeah, now I'm done blabbering and we'll just, we'll go to the car now. Now we're in front of the car. The very first thing we need to do is take off our stupid modern car engine plastics. So first thing we're gonna do is take out the charge pipe. So we need to take that clamp off the intercooler, this nipple thing right here, and then, all right, see bottom of the charge pipe goes right down. Here, that's where the other side of that charge pipe thing is. And the first one is right there, that one. Not bad. I'm using kind of a little, a little screwdriver to kind of Try the bypass valve loose a little bit. It might be easier to pull the bypass valve out of the turbo inlet. I loosened up this bolt and this bolt on the uh, intercooler to give it some wiggle room. So when I pull on this, it might actually come out of there. Ah, there it is, sick. Oh, God, why can't it be longer? Got you, motherfucker. Got you right on out the way there. There we go. Ta-da. Charge pipe with bypass valve. Yeah, you can see kind of in there where there's a lot of oil blow by. 
my hands are dirty so you can't really tell but there's a lot right there would you focus tiny screwdriver there we go. that actually wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be that be your ECU right there okay there's that bolt on top and then there are another bolt right up under there. Yeah, feels like it. All right, so this harness has to come off the bracket that's holding the power steering module on. So we've disconnected this one already. I just wanted to try it to see if it works. So this one, there's a little weird clamp thing, so you just grab a pair of needle nose and pull up on it, and it'll pop right out. And then we've got one more bolt to get this whole little mounting bracket out. Ah. Got it. Got it. It's free. We're going to do this the right way. So you're actually supposed to disconnect these connectors first, but I didn't because I was trying to cut corners like I always do. And let go. Let go. All right. So, all right, so there's this is the one holding it in right here, and right here on the top of this, and this right here. And then you've got one back in here. It's a 10 also. Jesus Christ, why is it? That's too bright. Now we've got to get this thing off right here. And then we've got another 10 right there. And now we just yank this stupid bracket out. Oh, there's another one. Come on. There you go. Oh, is it connected to something else now too? Let's maybe go behind all of this junk. Move. All of you move. Oh my God, there's another one. There we go. God, it's free. What are you stuck on now? Move. All of you move. Would you get out of the way? Success. This right here says relocate not very accurate all you're gonna do is take that out your bracket's gonna bolt right there you're gonna use that same screw this is the worst camera angle ever let's see right here I'm just gonna loosen up you will never fall out ground strap other one Yeah, that was the idea. So we had to take this thing off to move this thing down out of the way, which if I did that in the first place, it probably would have been a lot easier, but yeah, now it's all out of the way and it works perfectly. We can reattach that to there and boom. So much, so much more room for activities. Bend these brake lines ever so slightly, just so slightly. I feel like there should be enough room. And then right here, or right here and right here, I think, is where we're gonna bracket in our doodle. Now, we get to play with our octopus canister. Coolant hose, the shorter one, it says, and screw it in right down here. Just like my Friday night. You're gonna need focus, focus on this. Don't focus on my face. Haha, <laughs> seven eighths, there you go. There we go. All right, this is the longest one you got. You can tell because it's got that, that's, that's the coolant hose. North Carolina, take your shirt off. I don't remember the rest of the words, but it says something about spinning around your head like a helicopter, which is exactly what I'm doing. Christ. 
<laughs> okay, Oop, let's keep that out of the dirt, please. I wish I had some AN wrenches so that I didn't scratch this crap up, but that's pretty tight. Good right there. A what? Now, which we don't have an EGR that we have to worry about because you know. So we're gonna take the hose off of this doodle right here and put in the fitting for it, which are that doodle right there. I mean, my butt's still in the same spot. Why not? I could if you wanted to. Fifty. Alright. Now we got our torque wrench. I wish I had a smaller one. We're gonna set this to 15 foot pounds. One day. I feel like that's plenty tight. Now we're going to take our 90 degree fitting, here you are, and we're going to plug it into the back of our PCV. There we go. Move this back into place right here. Old PCV right here. We got our new PCV right here that's going to be rerouted. Um, and I believe that's everything on the back of the block. So now we're actually going to put the AOS in the car. We got our hoses on where we need them. Just need to plug in a bracket. You don't necessarily need those little orange clips that everybody uses in their videos. If you have a pair of vice grips, that'll work. It's gonna be the messiest part of this. Gonna... That's gonna suck, but we've got a rag in our turbo, so hopefully we don't make too much of a mess. Got my lovely assistant ready to plug the line as soon as it comes out. I've got it clamped, so let's see how it goes. Okay, get ready. Okay. There, go, 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 go. Okay. And go. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna take this one and rotate it 90-ish degrees so it'll bend back without kinking up the line. Plug this little fucker in here. Against our better judgment, we're gonna let go of that. There we go, Get that plugged on there. These are vice grips, because we're smart to hold the spring clamp so it doesn't pop off and smack me again. Boom. We got our spring clamp on our 90. I'm gonna plug it into our PCV hose right there. And I will already say, I like the design of the cob over the AA IAG because even in their instructions, they don't have it fitted through this hole right here. It feels like that's as on there as it's gonna get. Got that in. Now, we already got our spring clamp on this one. Not quite. A little bit more. There we go. Now we're on there. So now we've got to get this hose clamp off of here, pull this line off, and then this one, it's in top two breather hoses, that's going to go right there. I still look super pale. Shout out to awesome apartment lighting because you can see everything. So food break's over. We're almost done. We got, we got what I thought was the hard part done. I just did it like this hose right here it's got a little barbed fitting right there which those things are a pain in the ass so i got it out in like five seconds so thank god now we're going to take this hose plug it in there and then move that one 
back up here and we'll use one of those hoses to go into right there and then that's where this will plug we're almost done we're almost done okay coolant line run it all down here all the way down there we've got that's an oil line uh, this stupid line all the way up here to our breather tubes. We got this one plugged in here. We got this one plugged in to this thing. And we've got this one plugged into here and rotated around. And these are plugged in right here. And these are plugged in right here. We're almost done. Now, it just we just got to button everything back up. That's all we're doing. So, yeah. Uh, and then burp the coolant. And that's it. At this point, I'm very frustrated. It has been a long five hours of dealing with this. Most of that time was dealing with spring clamps instead of worm clamps. Do yourself a favor, get worm clamps to repla replace all the OEM factory spring clamps. When I went to go button everything up, my thought was keep the bypass valve in the charge pipe, plug it into the turbo inlet, tighten everything down from the turbo up to the intercooler back to the intake. My first mistake was leaving the bypass valve where it connects to the charge pipe somewhat loose. My thought was uh, the charge pipe and it can teeter a little bit so that I can finagle it into the turbo inlet and it can sit in there. The problem with that is since now my turbo inlet is silicone, it would just bend around. When I tell you I spent way more time than I should have before I stopped for the night. That is a vast understatement. Let me preface this with, I get frustrated very easily, especially when I'm on a time crunch. I, I did not film it because I would be embarrassed. I was trying to fit this in so hard to the turbo inlet that I went to the point of standing on the charge pipe, trying to push it into place. Luckily, nothing broke. I didn't break anything, so it's fine. Now, so I did get the charge pipe in with the bypass valve. All I needed to do was tighten up the clamp for the bypass valve going into the charge pipe, and then it just slid right in. Sometimes the best thing to do when you're working on a car, you start to get frustrated, is just stop, take a break, go get food, do whatever. The next day I had a friend come over and help me in the short little 30 minutes that I did have time. Um, I still had to work, so he pretty much put everything back together for me. Um, what he did is he loosened up the charge pipe from the turbo, went from the intake manifold back down to the turbo instead of the way I was trying to do it, tightening it up at the turbo and going this way. That's what you should do. That's what I did not do. This is why I make these videos, so that I can go through the pain and the struggle of frustration and contempt and wanting to throw your car off a bridge with or without you in it so that you don't have to. I want to thank everybody for watching this video. Um, I hope it helped you out even a little bit. If not, at least it entertained you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Hit the notification bell because I don't make videos very consistently because I have two jobs. If you haven't subscribed already, you should really do that because what I have coming up soon is going to be very somber and then exciting.